Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 22 of i5 for the iPhone palindrome episode. I'm Sarah Lane and I've got another fantastic show for you today because the iPhone apps and the news and the tips and the tricks just keep rolling in and I love passing it all along to you. So let's get started. Number one. In the past, I've recommended Agenda Calendar as a really good alternative for the native iOS calendar if you don't like the native version. But we might have a new winner with Fantastical. Love the name of that. If you watch my other iOS show, iPad Today, you might recall Leo being very excited about Fantastical coming to the App Store because it's the perfect complement to the Mac app that he already loves. But even if you don't use the Mac app and just have the iPhone app, it's still great. So let's look at it. You've got two views, the traditional calendar or Fantastical's day ticker. To add an event, just tap and hold on a date, type some details, or if your iPhone supports dictation, just tell it what you want to add. Dinner with the boys at 7 p.m. at the Casa. The natural language processing is actually pretty smart. I tried to stump it and it knew what I was talking about. Search between your calendars, swipe to delete an event, add whatever details you like to an existing event. Fantastical supports all the same calendars as the native calendar app, so getting up and running is a cinch. It's on sale right now for $1.99 in the App Store, so if you're still looking for that perfect phone calendar, happy holidays to you. Number two, if you have a Sonos music system set up in your home, you love it. I know this without even asking you because everybody I've ever met who has a Sonos system loves theirs. And the new Sonos app is even better because now you can stream your iTunes music to any Sonos speaker in your house. You can also make playlists from multiple music sources like Pandora and Spotify. And for bragging rights, you can also play five different music tracks in five different rooms if you've actually got that many speakers. And I don't really know why you'd want to do that, but it's still kind of cool. Sonos is also smart enough to keep its network activity separate from the rest of your devices. So if you have a party and a bunch of people jump onto your Wi-Fi network, for example, the music isn't going to drop out. I don't actually have a Sonos system at my house because Santa apparently can't take a hint. But if you do, enjoy your new and improved and free app. Number three, it's easy to follow people online, right? Facebook, Twitter, Google+, all well-known ways to scroll for a few minutes and get a general sense of what everybody's doing, what they're up to. But what about when you'd prefer to follow certain topics, not just your friends? And what if you want those topics presented to you as short blurbs kind of like status updates. That's exactly how an app called Wavy, which is spelled W-A-V-I-I, Wavy, works. It's not unlike an app like Circa or Sumly. We've talked about both of those apps on previous episodes. Those attempt to summarize news, except Wavy is more specifically a collection of topics. For example, I can follow the subject of Facebook or YouTube, or I could follow a topic of a person like Hillary Clinton, let's say. Though I'm following news about her, I'm not actually following any official Twitter feed or, or something like that through Wavy. Wavy does its best to pull together everything that the web has on Hillary and show it to me as concise topic updates arranged by date. If I want more information or I want to read the original articles, I just click through. If I just want to see what's popular or browse by categories that Wavy has hand-selected for me, like entertainment or, or business, I can do that too. It's easy to react to something or add a comment or share a topic update. There's a social network component too because my activity also gets shared with my friends who are following me. I know this is sounding a little complicated, but after navigating the app for a bit, it was easy. I got the hang of it. Wavy has had a web presence for a few months already. In fact, the iPhone app is what's new. And it's a little buggy, I have to say. I've had it freeze up on me a few times. But I do like it as a mobile service specifically. Think of it a little bit like a ton of Google Alerts in one place. Because we're all busy bees, and I'm all for making it as easy as possible to keep up on the stuff that matters. 
Number four. Got a nice little duh tip from Charles. By the way, Charles, you write in every week, and thank you for that. He writes, this time, the iPhone has a built-in dictionary that works even if you're not connected to the internet. While typing or reading, highlight a word and choose the option define. This could be really useful, especially when I'm in school. Yes, very good tip, Charles, and definitely one to know about if you don't already know about it. I like to think I have a huge vocabulary, but truth is, it's nice to always have a little dictionary handy. Finally, number five. Oh, heck. Let's end this year with another duh tip, shall we? Brianna writes in, I'm working on rearranging my iPhone icons. Moving a bunch of apps, like a lot of fresh new games, is cumbersome. My solution is to put the apps that are moving several pages away into a folder together until they get to their destination. Then either take them out and arrange them to preference or leave them as is. Thanks, Brianna. I, too, hate moving single apps over multiple pages. It's laggy, or then your finger slips, and the app spills into the wrong place, and everything gets messed up. Very annoying. Your folder tip is good. One of my similar tricks is to temporarily leave a slot in my main app dock so that I can move an app into the dock, quickly flip through a few pages until I'm on the page I want my app to live, and then dump it back there. Much easier than manually dragging page by page. And that's a wrap for this episode of i5 for the iPhone. If you'd like to auto-download this show every week without having to think about it, just hit the subscribe button at twit.tv slash i5. That's the same place you'll find all of our apps and story links, too. And if you know somebody who got a new iPhone for the holidays, let them know about our show. They might like it. Email us feedback at i5 at twit.tv. Leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5. Or send us a video with an app review of your own. We're taking next week off for a little end of 2012 R&R. So I will see you all next year in 2013 in two weeks. <laughs>